I have a three prong outlet and it's installed onto a cable that doesn't have a ground wire. This splice box is about two linear feet below the outlet. My goal is to replace the cable. It's a 15 amp breaker. I'll use type NMB 14 gauge two conductor with ground. I'll turn the breaker off that supplies power to the circuit that I'm working on. I've hung a sign on the breaker to prevent anyone from turning power on while I'm working. I'll ensure that my voltage tester is working by putting it into the hot side of a live outlet. So I'll test with the voltage tester and there's nothing on the hot side. Uh, let's check the neutral just in case it's miswired. Nothing there either. It's difficult to replace existing cable that's not in conduit because this is a short run and there isn't any insulation in the wall below the bottom of the outlet box. Odds are good that I can remove the old cable and fish a new one in its place. Another way to verify that power is turned off is to check for around 120 to 125 volts AC between the neutral and the hot, and I have zero volts. Earlier, with power on, I checked between ground and hot, expecting to read 120 to 125 volts AC. Instead, I read around 6 volts AC. That means that the ground wire is not connected to ground. In the near future, I'll make a video showing how to troubleshoot the problem. The videos on this channel are organized by playlist. Click on the channel name and you can easily find them. I've removed the wire clamp from the box. I've tried giving the cable a good tug and we had a diligent electrician who stapled the wire likely just below the box. I'll pull one of the wires through the cable housing hoping that will release some of the pressure between the cable and the staple. Depending upon the type of cable, its length, if it has a turn or a lot of staples, this method may not work. The end of the fish tape won't go around the corner, so I bent a hook on a piece of wire. First try, it came up below the box. I've worked the wire through the back of the box. I've connected to a pull wire. Uh, this is not a great connection, but because of how much resistance, it'll do. Ideally, there should be a person pulling the cable on one end and a second person guiding it and gently pushing the cable, if needed, on the other end. The pull wire slid through easily. Since I'll have more resistance pulling an NM cable through, I'll want a better connection. Strip the covering back on both one conductor of the NM cable and the pull wire about six inches and make them into loops like this. Then squeeze the loops flat To create a taper on the NM cable, I've staggered the ground and the hot wire. Then wrap the splice. I want to taper on this end so that it doesn't get caught pulling through. Because I don't want to risk cutting up the casing by dragging it through the small hole in the switch box, I'll try to pull the NM cable up from the basement. I was able to pull the NM cable this far into the switch box. I then met resistance that I felt if I pulled any harder, I may damage the cable. So I have minimal resistance 
I've cut the cable to length and removed the covering. If I can pull the wires through the casing 7 to 8 inches without damaging them, I won't have to remove the switch box and try to pull the cable through in the opposite direction. Most original boxes would be nailed to a stud and what you'd have to do is saw through the nails alongside of the box to remove it. The boxes on this installation are mounted on rails and those rails span from stud to stud. I have to saw through that to remove this box. If you have to remove a box for access then replace the original box with an old work box and you use um, these are called Madison bars or Madison straps uh, switch box supports. The straps clamp the box to the back of the drywall. They would slide in alongside of the mounted box and then this would be your drywall here, the back of it, this way, and you bend these straps over into the box. I'll check the wires to make sure that I didn't damage them during the pull and this is best practice after any pull. I'll check between the hot and neutral. I read an open. And I read open between ground and neutral. And I have open between hot and ground. And you would do this with nothing connected to the wires. Then check between each wire and a good ground and you should read an open there also. And this concludes the job that looked to be easy and turned out to be not so easy. I hope you found this video helpful. A thumbs up is always appreciated. Click on the channel name Know How Now to find other videos. And thanks for watching.